Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster, and today it is time to talk about all the everything of Kanye's second listening party for Donda. Technically the release event, still waiting on that album. If you're new, I normally do in-depth analyses of runway shows to uncover the storytelling references and nuances of designer clothes. If that's what you like, you should subscribe. For anyone who attended the first listening party in person, this was a gargantuan upgrade. I went to both in person and the first one was borderline unlistenable live. I like Kanye's work a lot, but the sound was completely blown out and the staging was cool for like 10 minutes until it became apparent that the only way to make that interesting for a full album's worth of time was to have this swooping camera setup that they did for the live stream. The rest of us just kind of saw this. But the second one was great. The album is shaping up really well. It's full of bangers and the visual presentation was stellar. And the visual presentation was brought to us entirely by the work of the creative director at Balenciaga, Dimna Vasalia. Kanye and Dimna have had a relationship for a number of years that's involved them collaborating mostly in really small ways. Dimna came in to help with the design on Yeezy's first collection and he consulted via text for the second collection. The two came together to make a fundraiser tribute t-shirt when DMX passed. Deemna designed Kim and Kanye's Halloween costume one year. <laughs> Kanye tweeted in February of 2016 that he was going to steal Deemna from Balenciaga. And both have very similar tastes. They both did staged lookbook photos that made use of actual paparazzi companies to take what were supposed to look like candid photos, but were of course posed photos. And both artists have an unhealthy fixation on the work of fashion designer Martin Margiela. Dimna actually worked at Margiela for four years directly after Martin left the house officially and Kanye has been obsessed with him for his entire career. He, he thinks of Martin as a personal hero. So after circling each other for years doing small scale collaborations and tag teaming design work and mutually being fans of each other, we are finally able to see Dimna and Kanye doing a large scale project together. And it was so good. And a large part of why it was such a successful project was because of their mutual love and understanding of the work of Martin Margiela. And that, that ends up being at the molten core of the visual element of this album release party. We're gonna do just the quickest of rundowns here real quick for those who are not familiar with Martin Margiela's work. Martin Margiela is a fashion designer who entered Parisian high fashion in 1988. He came in at a time when glamour ruled everything. This cheesy supermodel and celebrity obsessed industry was maybe at its corniest. Martin participated in Parisian high fashion, but he didn't show his collections at the Louvre or at the Grand Palais. He showed them in grimy cafes, at abandoned train stations. He, he showed them at playgrounds where kids were playing and kind of refused to stop playing. The clothes he presented looked unfinished. Seams were on the outside and he was pitching this chunky hooven boot thing at a time when women were expected to wear stilettos. The DIY thing is so popular now and this stuff looks really cool in hindsight, but it is impossible to express how controversial this shit was when it was first coming out. What could this possibly have to do with Donda? A bunch of stuff, Chief. Oh man, Chief. A bunch of stuff, Chief. Get, oh man, stuff, Chief. A bunch of stuff, Chief. Get comfy for the final time. I'm trying to do a pen flip while I do it. Shut up. And now I feel weird about doing it. A bunch of stuff, Chief, get comfy. Fast forward to now, we walk into the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. The massive ceiling is open. There is equipment strewn all around the border of the stadium floor. And at the center of the floor, there is a mock-up of Kanye's bedroom that he's been sleeping in for weeks. Complete with water, some weights, and a single candle that was burning before anyone could enter the building. This could be a direct reference to this famous photograph of all of Mahatma Gandhi's possessions. An alternative thought, it's not a direct reference, but there's this long-standing tradition of artists showing us where they sleep during times of very extreme work. And Kanye does tend to adopt a really extreme schedule when he's working on an album, and this bedroom is an incredible stage setting that brings us into that. Ye likes to work all hours, he's naturally obsessive and will usually work straight through the night and day, taking two hour nap breaks when he needs them. And considering that it is rumored that it's costing him a million dollars per day to stay there, that tendency probably served him pretty well. So this is the first major tie-in that brings Kanye and Dimna together to make this thing possible. One of the things that made Margiela's work so incredibly powerful is that he invited everyone into his process. For the fashion industry at that time, the process was a absolute secret. But Martin mastered this art of showing the process and 
bringing you backstage and showing the celebration and the relief when they had successfully pulled off another show. Again, this is so common now to do backstage stuff and to do all this video things and models will be doing IG Live stuff, but back in the 90s, fashion houses would never show their process because they thought it would ruin the mystery. But the truth that we all discovered in no small part because of Martin is that it creates this fantastic form of intimacy. Plus, there is something that's very poetic about paying a million dollars a night to sleep on the floor in the guest locker room at a sports arena. Let's talk about the merch a little bit. Dimna stepped in to overhaul the pretty middling merch that was there at the first listening party, and the new stuff looks great. This time we have a top inspired by a sports jersey, a standard logo long sleeve, a similar logo top that honestly kind of looks like a cropped robe because of the bell sleeves, and a f***ing bulletproof vest. The jersey is a variant on the Balenciaga jersey that made waves online because it cost $780. And that original Balenciaga design is based on Manchester United's 2002 goalkeeper jersey that was designed by Nike. This specific Balenciaga piece has been super successful in stores. It has been for a number of seasons, and I imagine that is probably why it is making an appearance now as merch because it sells well. The bulletproof vest is a little bit crazier though. So when, when Kanye first started the Yeezy brand, he was relentless about talking about the inspiration he derived from Margiela, but also from Helmut Lang. And one of the more legendary pieces that Helmut Lang ever designed was the bulletproof vest variant. So we see a tie back to Helmut Lang and we see a tie back to Kanye's first Yeezy show, which Dimna helped develop. But I think, honestly, more likely, it's just that security guards and all black uniforms are something that Dimna just really loves. These clunky, foreboding symbols of unease are part of the DNA that makes his work at Balenciaga so good. Bulletproof vests, riot gear, ill-fitting suits of mobster thugs. Dimna thrives on this kind of stuff. The thing to remember for right now is that everything is black. Black merch, Kanye's fits are all black, even Kim and the kids showed up wearing all black Balenciaga gear. So we all take our seats, Kanye walks out, and the music starts. I think it's a cool thing to remember here that this is still a listening party. It's likely that Kanye and Mike Dean and everybody else were down in the basement working on the album literally until the last minute. So I think it's a reasonable assumption to make that Kanye was listening to his album from beginning to end for the first time with everyone. Very vulnerable. Within the first couple of songs, the volunteer crowd takes to the stadium floor. There's an inner circle of a few dozen people wearing the black robe merch, and then there's a much bigger outer circle of people wearing head-to-toe black. Everyone's face is covered, including Kanye. And now it is time to talk about face coverings. Everyone, of course, remembers the incredible face masks that Maison Martin Margiela provided for Kanye during the Yeezus tour. They were foreboding, they were surreal, and in the most literal way, it was epic. So Margiela himself used masks for a number of different reasons. The most useful one to us in this situation is anonymity. Martin didn't like the fashion culture's fixation on supermodels in the 90s and the whole idea of which model was walking for which show. So he covered the faces of a lot of his models and let the clothes speak for themselves. And then Martin moved back to become anonymous himself, starting with his seventh show. He stopped coming out at the end to say thank you, and he couldn't be reached for interviews at all anymore. The press was actually forced to reach out to the company's general fax number, and then they would receive a response back, never knowing if Martin had even seen their questions. The answers never came in the form of I. The answers always came in the form of we. We're not gonna get into all the reasons as to why Martin chose to do this because it is complicated. But at a time when celebrity fashion designers were such a huge deal, designers were expected to be media darlings and be charming public figures and be able to socialize with everyone, Martin chose to back up and be absorbed into the group that was the Maison, the whole fashion house. In the Yeezus era, Kanye carried the Margiela mask aesthetically, and it looked so cool. But in this show, nine years later, Kanye brings the mask back out, and this time he's embracing it in the way that it was originally used. He's, he's embraced the symbolism of it. When was the last time that we heard Kanye speak publicly? He releases images on his Instagram, but over the course of two live performances and, I don't know, months, one of the most talkative celebrities of all time hasn't said a word, and he has always worn a mask in public. He even wears it to normal stuff. He went to an Atlanta United game for like 30 minutes and kept a mask on the entire time. He's adopted the principles of what Margiela meant when he put a mask on other people and metaphorically put a mask on himself. 
Kanye is now letting the clothes and more importantly, the music speak for themselves. And there's a number of comparisons in this presentation to Dina's work at Balenciaga as well. Besides the clothes that we'll look more into here in a second, there's this massive ring-shaped screen that wraps the open ceiling at Mercedes-Benz Stadium that changed as the songs progressed. Many of those video clips shown were very similar to a video that played on a massive screen above one of Dimna's most iconic runway shows. The floor was six inches of water and the sky was this churning, ominous omen of doom. A statement about global warming, among many other things. But let's talk about the clothes that Ye actually wore during the show. So, of course, he rocked the bulletproof vest for most of the time. That was kind of his base outfit. But then, he picked up and donned the Balenciaga spike jacket. Besides being the f***ing coolest jacket that I've seen in a really long time, this one has a pretty cool source of inspiration. Ladies and gentlemen, her. Siberian bear hunting armor. Okay, so full disclosure, there, there are debates about whether or not this is historically correct, but in the fashion space, this image gets passed around so much. And the jacket being done up in a glossy black reflects the fetishistic motif that's carried throughout most of Dima's work. No coincidence that this coat is also from the Global Warming Show. But the next coat, the next coat is so nuts. Kanye ditches the spike coat and dons another Balenciaga coat that has been sneakily disguised as a duvet cover on his bed. Kanye pulls it up over him and rocks this coat that seems to swallow him completely. This is the 58th look from Balenciaga's new haute couture show. Haute couture is a separate category of fashion. For Balenciaga, it represents the highest of the high fashion. One of Martin's most well-known pieces was literally a duvet that had been pattern cut into a coat. But the, the single best moment of this entire presentation was this element of the all black outfits. Okay, so let's back up here for a second. Kanye clearly enjoys being famous, but there's a weird price that comes with the level of fame that he's at. When you're wildly famous and you're a billionaire on top of that, it would be easy to lose your artistic hunger. Your drive to succeed and create something really special can start to drift away from you. And when your creative block comes in the form of something that you have no control over, your celebrity, you have to do some weird creative stuff to break through that. Kanye's solution to that seems to be blending in. Existing, but trying to not exist as Kanye for a while. Kanye can't ever really blend in, of course, but for someone of his level of notoriety, this is about as close as it gets. And for this show, he's there, wearing a mask, it's the body of Kanye with no face, wearing all black, surrounded by an all black crowd on the stadium floor. And thanks to the merch, the black uniform even spills out into those of us who attended as well. And I think that's what the ending is about. I think that at the symbolic core of this thing, Kanye had to stop being Kanye for a few months and become a person in a sea of other people in order to get hungry, to ascend, and to bring us something that was really special. Hey. If you love this stuff, I got a whole lot more for you. I've covered Dimna Vasalia's work extensively through a number of different episodes. And if you want to learn more about Margella, I've taken the time to do every single runway show. I'm about halfway done, but I'm doing every single runway show that Mark Margella ever made one episode at a time. So we're really taking our time and pulling out all the nuances of a person that I believe to be the most important designer of his generation. If you enjoyed this, subscribe. If you loved it, support it on Patreon. This channel can only exist if there is very literal, real financial support. Patreon is a platform that just allows you to give a few bucks a month to content creators that make really special stuff that you wanna see stick around. Huge, huge thanks to all the Kanye experts that have been keeping up with this stuff on a literal minute to minute basis. Uh, I, I usually keep up with the watching the throne guys, but also photos of Kanye and all of the other accounts. You guys are the best and maybe the most thorough community on earth. It's really impressive. Okay, well, I went to the show last night, then didn't sleep so that I could make this, so I'm gonna go to bed. I love you. Bye.